I think I think he's got to prove that there's a reasonable basis to think that there might be a material misstatement. Now, those are a lot of hurdles there. Don't forget. And, and one of the things about the complaint that's very helpful and I think will result. Don't don't take your advice from a lawyer about what's going to happen in the stock market. But I, I bet the Twitter stock goes up today because they tell a story about how the agreement was negotiated. Not mm. when you just read the contract, you got the contract. This complaint goes through in a very careful and I think fairly effective way, you know, what was argued about, how they compromised these, this provision and that. And one of the things about the whole bot point is there's no specific rep representation on, on bots or, or not. And it's about there's only a representation, which is normal, that Twitter's SEC uh, filings are accurate in all material ways. Well, wait a minute. You look at, you look at the SEC uh, disclosure here, and it's covered with caution. It calls itself an estimate. It says there's no one way to do this and all that. The other thing about the complaint here is that it, it goes into the fact that um, Musk has known forever about this issue. And the ambiguity about about uh, bots and all the rest of it, and asked for things in the in the merger agreement that they ended up not getting. So there those are a, those, those are important points. There should be a number, a, a sample size that gives you a real number, and every other statistics and probability that we do, there is a number where the standard deviation you can get it to, to almost zero. So I don't know why we're still saying we don't know what it is. I mean, he looks at 100 and says, oh, I looked at 100 and it's this. So obviously it's not 100, but there must be a number. Well, they're that, looking at 9,000. Well, that's what they said. Go to, go to 900,000. That, that wouldn't be that hard to do to sure, get but, to where the standard deviation. But, my, no, but the bigger issue, this is what I want to know. As the board of Twitter, yep. do you say we want 44 billion? Or do you enter into it? What is their responsibility as shareholders? Could they say to Elon Musk, okay, how about, how about 35 billion? Could, could they do that? Or is that, would then shareholders sue them for not oh, getting in this Oh, shareholders are always going to sue them, but there's a time value of money. They could, and, and the risk, risk adjusted for what the court could do. Of course they could do, take a lower bid. Yeah, but if they took a lower bid and I was a shareholder, I'd say, look, you had them right where you want them. And if they you, do have them. If you them. thought your case was that strong well, and you were willing to. But, what but, do you, don't you think it is? I think they have a very strong case. What I don't know, and maybe Robert can speak to this, is, and I think the, the Delaware courts will want to move fast because they want... They, that's, Within months, right. They, they want to show that that's what's happening. However, you could, you could deal with Delaware, then this could move to New York in terms of maybe some of the, the banks and the financing. I mean, he, if, if Elon Musk were successful just in dragging this out a year, by default, you'd have to knock a couple bucks, if not more, right. off, off the bid. What are the chances it... it, it he comes back with a, and, and does it eventually own it, and it's, there's a negotiated settlement between, between the two. I don't think it looks My like gut it. is he doesn't actually want it at all. At all. But he may recognize that he may at be what, on the hook for the whole thing at, anyway, okay, so, so he at, might as well at take what less. Price? I and then know. would that be something you'd settle for as a Twitter shareholder? Or would it you depends stick what with the it? delta is between the yeah. two things. Hey, Robert, I want my money. Robert, can you speak to one other legal piece of this that I know a lot of arbitrageurs and investors and the public are trying to understand? This is going on in Delaware, specifically between Elon Musk and the board of Twitter right now. There's this other issue which people have raised about the financing piece of this, that somehow if the, those who are financing this decided to somehow get out, and that includes the Larry Ellisons of the world and Morgan Stanley, which is based in New York, they would decide to get out if this could somehow move to a New York court. It's pretty clear, at least from yesterday's filing, that the financing has to, is already guaranteed um, and that he's on the hook for that. So I don't know if that's relevant or not, but there are a lot of lawyers talking about it. Well, it's the, the, the document includes the so-called Xerox provision. It's after the Xerox merger, where the financing sources said, look, you, you can't sue me other than in New York. Um, that's true. But the financing, the, the financing is the conditions of the financing are really the same as the conditions of the merger agreement. Theoretically, the banks can make an independent uh, determination about whether there's been a material adverse change. But probability, even though obviously I, I'm sure they don't like this commitment is any more than, than Musk does, um, the probability that they would lead the parade on this, I, I think, is really remote. Just too much other stuff. There's one thing for one thing for a buyer to say, well, I, I've got an issue here. The, the bank's backing off in, a, in something 
so unbelievably high profile. Mm -hmm. One of the things about this deal is, I'm not sure there's ever been a deal in the news as much as this, but almost by definition, it's on Twitter and all. But you know, I, I don't think it's going to end up in in New York. I I don't I don't think there's a low chance that there's a settlement. And going back to the point that Joe made, it, it, the board the board has the power to decide to accept uh, a, a, right. and recommend a lower price. In the end of the day, if the shareholders don't like that, they could vote it down. But they, right. It, right. The, the board could, and in other comparable deals, boards have yep. uh, taken haircuts. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.